I think getting peed on is just one of those things that happens. Hello, all of you beautiful birthing people. You look absolutely stunning today. I want to welcome you back for part two of my newborn essentials video. That's basically your newborn non-essentials. If you haven't checked out my first video, I will link it in an iCard. There's currently, while I'm filming this, a giveaway going on. It goes through the rest of this week. If you want to head on over to my Instagram and enter that giveaway, you can definitely do so to win the things in my newborn essential videos. Basically, this video, there's going to be a few controversial things on here, I'm sure, because people get a little upset if you don't agree with them. But this is my disclaimer. This video is for those of us who are seeing what we can avoid, what we don't need, what's not safe. And on that, I'm pretty firm that you shouldn't be using these things. But on the other things, you know, if you have them and they're working for you, that's fine. Honestly, that's great. But these are things that maybe we can hold off on buying, wait and see if we need them, or things that you just frankly don't need at all. I'm gonna start off with the things that just are not safe, you should not be using. I don't know why they're on the market. The first one for that is gonna be crib bumpers. Yes, back in the day, crib bumpers were all the thing. They came in all those really horrible pastel colors that people were really into in the late 80s, early 90s. But what do we know about safe sleeping surfaces? Well, a safe sleeping surface has a nice firm mattress with a fitted sheet with no other blankets, pillows, or stuffed animals present for at least the first year of life. Now, when we have crib bumpers, what do those kind of sound like? Kind of sounds like pillows, stuffed animals, extra loose blankets. And so what we were finding is that babies were actually suffocating in the crib bumpers or getting stuck in between the crib bumper and the crib mattress or the crib bumper and the crib itself. So they are not safe and they should not be used. I know a lot of people are gonna say, oh my gosh, you know, what about the breathable ones? I'm still not really the biggest fan of those either. I think anytime you add anything else to the sleep environment, you run the risk of having issues and can have some pretty devastating consequences. So number two, and this is as a labor and delivery nurse and a postpartum nurse who discharges new parents all the times, probably one of my biggest pet peeves that it is still on the market because we know, we know that they are not safe. And that is, things that you add to the car seat that were not provided by the car seat manufacturer themselves, that didn't come in the box, that didn't say in the manual, you can add this, this is approved in our car seat. Because all of these car seats are crash tested and they're crash tested for safety and making sure that your infant stays in the car seat. That's the goal, right? That they're cocooned in this protective car seat and protected from being ejected from the car or from the car seat. And when you add extra things that are not approved by the manual, what you are doing is you are taking something that's crash tested and studied, and you are adding another variable to that crash testing that hasn't been studied. So what am I talking about? Um, car seat strap covers that you can find on Etsy, like sheepskin ones, ones that are pretty fabrics and patterns. Headrest pillows that go behind the head. Now, sometimes in the car seat manual, it'll say, take a rolled up blanket and put it around the baby's head to help them keep their head in a midline position. But just check your car seat. That doesn't really affect how the car seat fits, but having those strap covers affects it. Anything that would go underneath the baby affects it. Now, when I am educating people, a lot of times they're like, oh my gosh, we had no idea. Like I bought this at Target. Why are they selling it if it's not safe? And to that, I don't have a specific answer because I would think that regulating the safety of our car seats and safety of things for our children would be paramount, but apparently it's not. So. When I make sure that your baby is properly strapped into the car seat, I'm looking for all those extras and we're gonna remove them. And if you choose to add those back, at least then you have the education that those aren't safe and that your baby could be ejected from the car seat. It could be fine, right? But it also could not be fine. And why would you take that risk over something that just kind of looked pretty? Okay, sorry, that's my high horse. Those are my two things that are just expressively not safe, not safe, not safe, that you do not need to buy for your baby. And if you get them in a baby shower gift, say thank you and send them back. Going from there, I'm gonna talk about some things for feeding. 
Now, if you are going to be exclusively breastfeeding your baby, I do not recommend going out and buying a whole kit, a whole system of bottles. You know, what we know of these little suckers, these sweet little sucking babies, is that they often have bottle preferences and sometimes we have issues getting them to take a bottle. Even between my two children, they both took different bottles. So what is a better idea is buy a few singles of different bottles and then try those out and see what works for your baby when you introduce the bottle. And I am going to insert my video about bottle introduction here and how to make sure that your breastfed baby takes a bottle because that's a whole nother worry. But really what we don't wanna do is have all of these bottles, you opened and tried one, your baby is not a fan of it and now you have nine bottles that you can't use out of 10 because you've opened the pack. Okay, so going off of feeding and bottles, another thing that you don't need to buy, this is gonna be, <laughs> these two are a little controversial. You don't need to have a nipple shield going into your breastfeeding relationship. So a nipple shield is a small plastic shield that goes over your nipple to assist with baby latching. It could be because you have flat or inverted nipples. It could be necessary if baby has a tongue tie and is having difficulty latching. Also can be used if you are having significant nipple pain with latching. But a nipple shield can have some negative consequences. So it can inhibit milk transfer if it's not used correctly and under the supervision of an IBCLC, an international board certified lactation consultant. And so then we can also have issues with your milk coming in and coming in adequately and getting infections from your breast not being adequately drained. So if your nipples are really sore and are cracked and bleeding, we have other issues that we need to address before just using a nipple shield and calling it a day. Now, obviously, if we are at the point in a breastfeeding relationship where either we're using a nipple shield or we are not breastfeeding at all, definitely use the nipple shield, but use it under the advice and care of an international board certified lactation consultant, because it's a really good band-aid to kind of help bridge us until we can fix a problem. So if we've got a problem with a tongue tie and we can't yet get it released, a nipple shield can be a really good asset there. If we're having trouble latching baby because nipples are flat or inverted, it can be a good band-aid until baby gets a little bit better at latching on those flat or inverted nipples. Most women do not need it to successfully breastfeed because it's called breastfeeding. It's not called nipple feeding. You do not need to have erect nipples to breastfeed, but sometimes it can be difficult to learn how to breastfeed with flat or inverted nipples, but it's not impossible. Certainly not. So there's my two cents on nipple shields. Going off of that one, and this one I know might get me some heat. If you are planning on exclusively breastfeeding, there is no need for you to have backup or safety formula on hand. Where we are now, it's readily and easily available. You can get it from the hospital if it's needed medically. You can get it from the pediatrician if it's needed medically. But you don't need to have formula on hand just in case because if your goal is really to exclusively breastfeed sometimes having that there just in case makes it really tempting to use and sometimes when you're alone after you get home and those first few days baby is so fussy and wanting to be at the breast all the time it can really be more encouraging for you to use that formula that you don't need to use if you really don't wanna be using formula. And it is totally fine if you want to feed your baby formula, if you want to do a combination of breast and formula. But a lot of us don't have the knowledge of realizing if we introduce formula, then that's going to affect that supply and demand relationship that our babies are having at the breast. So if we feel like we need to give formula because we're not producing enough, giving formula makes babies full for longer, makes them demand less at the breast, makes your breasts make less milk, and then it's kind of this cycle. So if you are having concerns about breastfeeding or after you deliver, definitely see an IBCLC. This is basically a commercial for seeing an IBCLC at this point, but they're so imperative and important. So going off of that, another thing that you don't need to buy are those breast milk alcohol strips, the ones that tell you how much alcohol is in your breast milk. This is for a multitude of reasons. So when we drink, we have a blood alcohol content. Now, our breast milk is made through our blood. So keep following me on this one. A lot of people will pump and dump because they think if I remove the milk that is in my breast right now while I'm drunk, the milk that comes in won't have any alcohol in it. But if there's still alcohol content in your blood, the milk that you make 
next will still have alcohol in it. So pumping and dumping, in the sense of if I pump and get rid of this, I won't have alcohol in my milk, is not a thing. But if you are not comfortable feeding your baby because of drinking, you do need to pump to tell your body to keep making more milk. Now, the amount of alcohol that actually gets into breast milk isn't very much. We say if you are sober enough to drive, you are sober enough to breastfeed because really you just need to be sober enough to stay awake and feed your baby and put them down in their safe sleeping environment. So often what we recommend if you're a little bit nervous or anxious about drinking and breastfeeding is in the evening when babies often have their longest stretch of sleep, feed your baby, put them down, have your one drink, and then when it's time for baby to eat again in three to four hours, all of that alcohol should be out of your system. But like I said, if you're sober enough to drive, you're sober enough to breastfeed your baby. So buying little strips to tell you if there's still alcohol in your milk, not really necessary. Let's move on to digestive tract things, if you will, right? Your baby has had all of their fill of milk and now they're loading up their diaper. Something that I wouldn't recommend buying a whole bunch of is newborn diapers. These diapers typically fit babies from about, what do they say, six to nine pounds? but we do a lot of really rapid growing right in the beginning. So I would have a pack of newborn diapers on hand, and then when you do your diaper showers or when people are buying you diapers, ask that they buy you size one and above. Those are the ones that you're really gonna go through. Some babies come out and they're too big for newborn diapers. Similarly, you don't really need to stock up on a whole bunch of newborn clothes. Unfortunately, that's what people love to buy you is a whole bunch of newborn clothes because they're like, oh, baby shower, newborn clothes. So when you get your newborn clothes, you know, go through them, figure out what works and what doesn't, and then return what doesn't work for a larger size would be my recommendation. I'm gonna talk about the PPTP, which is, if you're not familiar, a little piece of fabric that you put over your baby's penis when you change their diaper so that they don't pee on you. I think getting peed on is just one of those things that happens with brand new babies. Little girls will do it too. It's just cold air, it hitting their genitals. And if you're worried about getting peed on, instead of giving yourself a very small little TP that you have to go find and then place on the penis, and by that point your baby might have already peed, go ahead and just put a clean diaper over it or put the diaper over it while you're cleaning their bottoms because you're really just making more laundry for yourself it's pretty unnecessary. I mean, they're, I guess, cute, but like, I don't really get the point there. And pro tip, if you don't circumcise your sons, they're way less likely to pee on you because they're a little bit more protected from that cold air by the foreskin. Food for thought. So the last thing I wanna talk about are newborn mittens and newborn socks. You know I'm not a big fan of either one of these because they don't stay on very well. The newborn socks, I talk about the Gumi boots in my last video on what you should buy that I think are fabulous. They Velcro on, there's elastic, those stay on the feet. But mittens I don't like for another reason. Now I know a lot of people are like, oh my babies are scratching their face. Well, they're not used to their nails being sharp and a nice little nail filing and filing down those nails is a great thing to do. But babies explore the world through their hands. Their hands in the womb were what was comfortable for them to suck on. And then when they come out, this whole world is scary and big and new and they feel comfortable being with you. But a lot of times they also just feel comfortable with their hands. And when you put a piece of fabric over their hands and don't let them experience their hands as they were experiencing them before, I just, I don't think it's a great thing. I don't think that they're necessary. And I think that in general, if we can kind of keep them feeling as if they're still in the womb by keep wearing them close, keeping them snuggled and letting them have their hands by their face, they're going to be much happier babies. Anyway. That's my whole video. Let me know what you think down below. Is there anything else that you bought that was totally unnecessary? Is there anything on my list that you 100% disagree with? Let me know. And my giveaway Instagram thing will also be linked down below. Have a lovely day and I will see you guys next week. Bye.